welcome to the Tim Allman Show tonight. Um, I have a special guest from New Albany, Mississippi. His name is Terry Dowdy. Welcome, Brother Terry. Tim, good to be here. Great, great to have you. I um, heard some great things about you. Uh, well, that's always nice. <laughs> uh, Terry, he, he has a singing ministry uh, that he goes out to churches that um, goes out and he sings the gospel of Jesus Christ to people. Uh, he also, tell us a little bit more about you, Terry. Well, I also um, preach as well. I've uh, been doing singing and preaching kind of as a combination of it all together since about April 2002. Wow. That's been a long time, hasn't it? Well, it's been a little while, but uh, time sure flies when you're having fun. I'm having fun. Now, what got you started in the ministry there? Well, you know, um, it was just a calling that God placed on my heart and my life, and uh, I'd never had sang in front of anybody much until I was, you know, 40 whatever years old and and uh, never had did anything in front of anybody because I was horrified, kind of like I am right now, you know. And <laughs> Especially when you're on live TV. Yeah, live TV and, uh, um, you know, we just kind of uh, just listened to the voice of the Lord and one thing went into another and uh, we just was obedient to his call and uh, by doing that he's allowed us to go to a lot of places, meet a lot of people, win some souls to Christ and, and have some fun doing it even. Most important thing is winning souls yes, you know, sir. for the kingdom of God there. Um, you are married. I am. And um, you got a beautiful wife. She's in the audience, by the way, and um, very, very attractive. And uh, also, she's. Uh, I didn't realize that she works at a doctor's office there in New Albany, too. So, she does. Um, and so I'm not trying to put her on the spot. but uh, the um, Now, you started singing a little over eight years ago. Um, different types of music now. As you was up here tonight practicing, you kind of reminds me a little Elvis, you know. Well, I, you know, I used to do, um, not in front of anybody, but just sitting around the house. I used to do some Elvis and country, rock and roll, just, just all of it, really. Um, but my calling was, was where I could use the talent that God gave me and to win souls to Jesus Christ. And that's what it's all about. And um, I'm not knocking that other kind of music. I don't want you to misunderstand that or anybody else. But right. I just want to use that that the Lord placed on my heart and just be as obedient to Him as I possibly could be. And, you know, I know in my past experience, I'm, you know, I'm 39 years of age, and over the last um, couple of years, you know, the the devil try to enter into your mind and put you through a dis depression stage in your life. And what has really helped me out has been the gospel music the southern type gospel music that has you know go back and watch and listen to the bill gaither videos and you yeah. know it, it's just something about you know the the songs there the inspiration there and um in just a few seconds um tony's gonna have a, a cd of um, brother terry's dowdy here to sing for us and um tell us a little bit about the song that you're about to sing well we've got uh two or three maybe lined up tonight and uh, the last one that I'll try to do tonight I'll, I'll do it with my guitar if I'm permitted to do that and I uh, really had fun with that song but I don't want to give that away too much but this first song that we'll do here in a minute is a song that was made uh, well known on the radio by the Wiznats. It's a song called Nail It to the Cross and um, I went into New Life one day as I uh, used to go in there and browse around and the cl clerk that worked in there and she said well you back looking for something else you know and she said, well, I got something that, that came in I believe you'll like. And uh, I said, well, let me listen to it, you know. And, and when she did, it just it just melted my heart. And I thought, yep, I'm sure going to like that one. And I, um, I believe it may be a blessing to you. We'll Great. do it here in just a little bit. Now, Tony, if you can put that in for us, and uh, Brother Terry's going to sing that. And back at home, uh, we're going to put up Terry's um, information on the screen there that you can get a hold of Terry. Um, if you want him to come to your church or any outing where you want his ministry to bless you or your congregation, uh, just give him a call. His number is right up there, 662-316-3374. That is Brother Terry Dowdy out of New Albany, Mississippi. Go ahead, Tony, and play that first song for Terry here. something in your heart between you and the Lord? Are you drifting up 
apart, not as close anymore. There's nothing you can do that He will not forgive. Bring it to the cross, let it die so you can live. Nail it to the cross, get it under the blood. Drown your pain in every stain in the crimson flood. Nail it to the cross and hope and forgiveness. Kneel at the tree and walk away free. Nail it to the cross. Is there something in your life got you better? Are you struggling for strength? Do you long to lay it down? Don't take another step. Just kneel where you stand. Lay it at the cross. Take a hammer in your hand. Nail it to the cross. Get it under the blood. growing up is people you know that have all the burdens in their heart but they just they would take it to the altar but they just would never leave it there you know at the cross of Jesus you know Tim too many times in our life we want to fight our battles ourselves and we're not big enough to do that right uh, I've went through some things over the last few months uh, that I just couldn't handle by myself um, and and part of my thinking was there's just no end to all this. And, uh, you know, there's some, some bad things happen out of it, but there's some good things that happen out of it too. Right. God will use things sometimes to get your attention in life to get you back to where you need to be. That is so true. He, uh, you know, I, I preach a sermon called The Storms of Life. Uh, everybody has them. You're either in one, going through one, or coming out of one. And that's just the way it is. And it's just life, and sometimes life, life is hard. Um uh, but the man that can stand and say, peace be still to those storms, is the one that we sing about and the one that we love and the one that died on an old rugged cross for a sinner like me. And I just can't understand that, but right. by faith I receive it and I sure do joy in it. You know, and, and that's, <clears throat> if people can just take that message there and just leave it there, and, you know, and it's like I've told my wife in the past, you know, is forget the past. You know, it's under the blood of Jesus. There you go. You know, and, you know, the Satan is always going to try to bring it <coughs> back, you know, in the back of your mind or through other people that are so-called, what you call so-called Christian people, you know, that still have the hatred and bitterness and things in their life, and they always try to bring up people's issues, you know. Yeah, they will. And, and, and we'll go through that. And so and we just got to pray for them. You know, but we just got to worry about ourselves and make sure our salvation, you know, is right with the Lord. You know, because Satan is always going to bring um, things back to you, 
and um, and I always uh, my granddaddy and was always a you know he's a he's a pastor and he passed away years ago but he always told me brother Terry is that if Satan is not messing with you at all that means he's got you that's right and that's so if you're right. going through something <coughs> in TV land here that uh, you're going through you don't understand you know take it to the cross take it to the cross um, this uh, next song um, tell us a little bit about it well it's a uh, I actually believe um, Brother Carol Robertson did it, and uh, what a job he does on it, and I'm certainly not trying to compete with uh, the King of Slingers. As he's my hero, and I've told everybody that, and I tell him that. And I actually believe his brother Stan, I think, wrote this song, and uh, he, is, um, he, does, he uses his talent for the Lord, and I praise him for that. And, and um, he has did some mighty fine music, and he blesses my heart every time that uh, I get to watch him on TV or see him wherever. Right. And uh, I think Carol Robertson's from Ripley. Here, he is. Like, you know, I think he is. He's sure been an inspiration to me and, and so, a big help. Uh, you know, I've seen you know, a lot of um, TBN and different other, you know, stations that's out there and his music there. And um, he's got a, a lot of good songs that, that's out there. He sure does. Yeah. And this song, um, you know, we were talking about taking your – uh, burdens to the cross and just leaving everything at the cross take it to the foot of Calvary this song uh, the title of it is it's when you call on him and uh, you can have all the head knowledge about what to do but if you don't ever apply it it's not ever going to do you a bit of good but when you do call on him you're going to get some immediate relief uh, you won't ever be the same I guarantee you that's true you know <coughs> a lot of people you know we're going to have to go to a commercial break shortly then when we come back I want you to sing that song okay. but before we go to the commercial break is a lot of people will go to the banker first will go to the doctor first and, and nothing against that but you know instead of calling on the Lord to help them out through their trials and tribulations you know they try man first some folks listening might do the try to do it the way that I've done it now I've been told by my wife and others that I'm just a little bit on the hard-headed side <laughs> and there's a right way a wrong way and Terry's way and of course, there's God's way, which is always the right way, but sometimes I want to do it my way, and the Lord just had to show me that, well, I told you how to do it, and you didn't listen. You didn't listen. So you had to learn some yeah. things, and uh, he always has a way of getting you in your, in, getting you put back in place, doesn't he? Hey, hey, he really does, Terry. <laughs> I mean, he really does. Hey, we're going to go to the commercial break. I do want to thank our sponsors for uh, sponsoring the Tim Allman Show, um, Hopper's Furniture, and Mr. Floor Tire Company out of uh, Florida's Tire in New Albany, Mississippi there. I do appreciate their sponsors there. Uh, Tony, if you can take us to a commercial break, I appreciate it. Hey, welcome back to the Tim Holman Show here, and uh, we're going to get that song um, going. Um, Terry, um, introduce us again to the song. The name of the song, Tim, is uh, When You Call On Him. When You Call On Him. searching everywhere but peace they cannot find I am just a simple man but this one thing I found trusting in the Lord has turned my life around when you call on him Jesus 
Christ will forgive you and become your dearest friend when you call on Him. Old things will pass away, a new life will begin when you call on Him. In your darkest hour, when you're lost and all alone, friends have all forsaken, and it seems all hope is gone. When you trust in Jesus, from that moment you believe, all your sins He'll wash away, and a pardon you receive when you call. Give you and become your dearest friend when you call on him. Old things will pass away, a new life will begin when you. Become your dearest friend when you call on him. Old things will pass away, a new life will begin when you Friend, I'm so glad that he reached down from heaven to the fair land one night and saved my old wretched soul. You know what? He'll do the same thing for you today. When you call on him. It does, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> we serve an awesome God, Jim. We do. Now tell us about uh, you was after the commercial break. You were telling me about the elementary school there. Well, <clears throat> you know God does things in your life. Sometimes you don't agree with them, but He always knows what's right. And um, He actually placed me at the New Albany Elementary School as a as a because I just retired from the local police department there in New Albany after 25 years, and um, He placed me in the elementary school. And um, actually, there was three jobs that came came available, and. Um, I picked everywhere but where he wanted me to go. And um, first one didn't work out, and then second one I didn't want, and I began to pray about it, and he said, well, you know what? I told you where to go, and you didn't listen. So as it always happens, I gave in and ended up right there at the New Albany Elementary School, and uh, I didn't have a clue what I was doing there. Okay. I had never worked around so many kids in my life, and I love kids with all my heart. And I uh, had always said that I wanted to work with kids, but I never knew that it would come about that way. Right. And, uh, you know, sometimes we just want to have confirmation in our life that we know we're doing the right thing. And uh, sometimes we get it right off, and sometimes it may be a while later. But um, I remember the first week that I was there, and we're talking about some 1,100 uh, students there at the elementary school from kindergarten through fifth grade. And, and I remember walking the halls, and, of course, I was in full police uniform, you know, and. Uh, all the kids were looking at me, and I remember walking on one the kindergarten in, and uh, there was this little boy. I mean, he couldn't have been in no further than the first grade, and he come by, and boy, he was staring a hole through me, and he was checking me out from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, and and uh, I thought, man, he is checking this uniform out, you know, and I thought, I'm thinking I must look pretty good in that uniform. <laughs> no, that ain't what it was, and uh, he walked on by me, and I spoke to him, and I said, hey, little buddy, how you doing? And he didn't say anything. He walked on by, and he went about 20 to 30 yards by, and uh, he never took his eyes off of me. He kept his, his whole head turned around watching me, and I thought, well, if you don't um, watch where you're going, you're going to run into the wall or something, you know? Right. And uh, <laughs> he came running back up to me, and I thought he was going to say, well, can I see your handcuffs? Or 
can I see your whistle or just some of the things that uh, Mike would uh, make a little boy want to ask about. And he looked at me right square in the eyes, Tim, and um, I'll never forget it as long as I live. And he had no idea who I was. I had no idea who he was. He had absolutely no idea that I was in the ministry. And uh, he looked at me and he said these words, and I quote, did Jesus really die on that cross? Wow. And I just, I was overwhelmed at, at what he did because, you know, there's no way that could have happened other than God Almighty put that together to give me the confirmation that, that I thought I needed. Uh, and that, that just touches my heart. And I've shared that story in a lot of places that I go with. Right. You know, I, it, it, people tell me, well, that just, man, I get chill bumps all over me. And sometimes I get them just telling it because you never underestimate what God can do. You know, it's true, you know. Yeah. And, and I know the, the last couple of years you worked at the alternative school there. I did. And um, with my wife, Tammy, there, and, and you know, plus a few other teachers there. And, Brother Terry, you saw so many kids that come through that alternative school, I mean, from kindergarten on up, that has all kinds of problems in their life, you know. You know, how can we reach out there to, is it, you know, is it the parents, or is it the kids, or is it just the friends, or what is going on there? Well, it's a, I think after, you know, serving in law enforcement as long as I have, it kind of gives me a, a pretty good insight to answer that. I think it's a combination of all of it. Uh, we as parents, sometimes we don't do what we need to do with our children and let them get away with things they shouldn't. Uh, I'm guilty of that myself with, with my own children. and. You know, sometimes uh, children are just rebe rebellious and they don't want to listen to what their parents say. And then, uh, you know, it just comes full circle. I don't think you can actually just point your finger at, at any certain thing as much right. as it is just a, a combination of all of it. And, um, and you know, I, I've always tried to be a good person. Before I ever got in, in the ministry, I still got in, uh, tried to be a good person. Even before I got saved, I still tried to be a good person. Uh, but when that happens, when you ask the Lord Jesus to come live in your heart, uh, there's a change that takes place, sure. and it's a change for the better, I might add. And I, um, does that mean you're always going to stay uh, where you need to be? With the, well, you can wander off. You can. It's true. But he is such a big God that when you do, he's going to chastise you a little bit, and it might be a whole lot, but he'll pull you back into his fold because you're his. You might go through hell, hell and back to, you know, but you will get back to him. You know, and, uh, and, I, and I experienced that in my own personal life, you know, and I got my own testimony that's out there also, you know. Um, but sometimes we do break away from, you know, from the Lord and say, hey, we're going to do it my way. And our way will get you in more trouble, <laughs> you know, and than you want to be. It sure will. And, and, so, uh, and so we got another song we're about to sing, and tell us a little bit about it. Well, now this one I do with my, my guitar. Okay. And uh, I've got, you know, I've, the Lord's allowed me to go through a lot of churches and uh, to sing and preach and, that, and you know, the, just to come. I always do both of them. They say I can't preach without singing and I can't pre uh, sing without preaching. So <laughs> right. it's kind of a pretty good combination there, I guess. But I've stepped behind the pulpits before and, you know, I'd ask them this question. How many of y'all want to hear some Haggard? You know, and... Some of them say, yeah. And uh, I said, well, I'm going to do some Haggard, but I'm not going to do some Merle Haggard. Right. <laughs> and I do love Merle now. And, uh, but Merle's son, Marty, if, I don't know if you have ever heard of him or not. But I've never heard of Marty, but I've heard of Merle Haggard. You know. Marty, is, uh, he got saved, and he was had a very prominent career in country music coming up, and he got saved, and he just gave, he sold everything he had and followed a, a career in, um, in the gospel music field, in the ministry. And uh, he wrote this song that uh, is kind of my signature song, if I can say it that way. I've kind of barred it, and um, I just think it's a great song. It's, it, uh, the, the lyrics in it are just awesome. You know, this this ministry that, that I have, that I don't, it's not mine, it's the Lord's. Right. He gave it to me. Uh, the life that I have, it's not mine, it's his. And uh, I tell folks that it's not me, it's not about me, it's not about you, but it's all about Jesus Christ. And the name of the song is, it's all about Jesus. And uh, there's two verses to it, and, and I kind of wrote a third verse to it, and I'll do that, that tonight too. And, okay. Uh, if that's okay. And 
Um, I believe that song will maybe it'll bless a lot of folks. Love to hear it. You know, like I said, uh, if you'd like to get Brother Terry Dowdy to come to your church, I hope you're enjoying um, this um, ministry tonight. Um, numbers up on the uh, TV screen there. So that's what Hagerson um, wrote, okay? It is. It's Merle Haggard. Not Merle. I'm sorry, Marty. Marty. And uh, I thank him for, for changing, you know, he, his convictions were to change his lifestyle. God changed him from the inside out, and he'll do uh, you the same way tonight if uh, you need that, and we all do. Yes, sir. And uh, he changed me from the inside out, but I hope this song will bless your heart, and you don't listen so much to the way that I sing it, but just listen to the words about it. Uh, name of it, It's All About Jesus. With every breath and step I take, every song I sing, It's 
not about you.